Former national chairman of the Nigerian Bar Association, NBA, Olumide Akpata, last Friday, won the Edo State Labour Party governorship primary election. The returning officer for the election and deputy governor of Abia State, Ike Chuku Emeto, declared Akpata as a winner after collating the results. Akpata scored 316 votes to emerge the winner of the exercise. Prior to the election, the national chairman of the Labour Party, Julius Abure was arrested by the Nigerian police and later released after spending hours at the police station. Joining us now on this show as we review the arrest of Julius Abure, Labour Party primaries in Edo State and Akpata's emergence as the party's flag bearer in the September governorship election. It's Kendi Edo, National Legal Advisor of Labour Party and Prince Kennedy Ahanotu, National Youth Leader of the Labour Party. Gentlemen, thank you for joining us on the morning show. Thank you very thank much. Thank you so much, Uncle. Uh, thank you. Good morning. Thank you, sir. Well, very quickly, what is happening with the Edo Labour Party? We were told on Friday that uh, Ulumide Akwata had emerged as a candidate and it was congratulated by Julius Abure, chairman of the party. But then the same day, we were told that the Lamidi Akwakpa faction had announced Anderson Asemota as the validly elected candidate of your party, and that that was uh, communicated uh, to the Independent National Electoral Commission. And then this morning, we were told that your party, in the same process in Edo State, now has a third governorship candidate, Idahosa. That's his name. I think I got the name correct. So one uh, party primary process, three different events, three different candidates. Can you gentlemen help us explain this confusion? Let's start with the legal advisor. And then, Kennedy, uh, not to, uh, you can win and also give us your perspective. Uh, thank you very much. First, let me address the, the comedy, comedy of errors by the decent, decent group led by Apapa. These are a defeated, confused group. And what they have done is mere comedy of errors and screw up. Firstly, you don't submit names of candidates to INEC by mere letter. That is in the past. For about four years now, the INEC guidelines have consistently stated that nomination of candidates is by the upload of the candidates' names and particulars to the INEC portal through a code that can only be released to the national chairman of the political party. What they have done is laughable. Don't write a mere letter, and it should be disregarded by Nigerians and the good people of Edo State. Secondly, the window for the nomination of candidates for the Edo governorship election has not even opened. By the INEC timetable and guideline, the window will open from the 4th of March and close on the 24th of March. And the nomination can only be done online through the upload of the particulars of the candidates to the INEX portal through the code that only Abure can have. They are not recognized. Nobody will give them the code. So what they have just done is a comedy of errors, as I called it, and they screw up and should be disregarded. That is one. Two. As for the other group, that somebody that was there, we never heard of that. Only one authentic, valid primaries held in Edo. The Labour Party only held one authentic, valid primary supervised by INEC, and it was held at Reverend Kelly's Centre on the 23rd of February. And that primary was won by Olumide Akwata. He is the candidate of the party. And all the people of Edo are rallying behind him. And we are happy about his emergence. And we are on the way. 
to produce the next governor of Edo State that I shall bring, that I shall bring tremendous development. The youth are happy with him, everybody is happy with him, and we are good to go. Okay. Thank you. Um, National Youth Leader Kennedy, uh, your perspective. Well, uh, Uncle, good morning and thank you so much, Nigerians, for this opportunity once again. Uh, the National Legal Advisor have uh, stated it clearly, and uh, I stand with him in all he has said. What I felt is that uh, maybe the Nigerian media is actually giving some level of credence to people that are nowhere to be found in the party. If you can remember, Uncle Abati, this whole issue started over uh, about a year now, in March 5th, 2023, when they besieged, a papa group besieged the party office, desecrated the party office, tried to hijack the party and distribute positions to themselves. I was the one that also came out and said that as long as that process, a due process was not followed in what they did, that it will not stand. And for one year, about a year, we are just entering March. March 50 will be a year that the whole thing started. They've not been able to gain the confidence of INEC, the confidence of Nigerians, the confidence of the party. How come that these guys are always getting the confidence of the media? Because I feel that what our, our papa and co, and Arabambi especially, because I can tell you categorically today that that group is no longer together. Arabambi is on his own. Arabe is on his own. In fact, one of them, the Northeast, former Northeast National Vice Chairman, ran senatorial posts under PDP. Lawan, the national, the, for that dissident national secretary is not with them. It's only Arabambi that is playing all these antics, and we know. And I want to use this opportunity to beg Nigerian media. The little opportunity that you people have given us to enjoy, you know, coverage. We appreciate it, but we appreciate that we begin to train people to engage in investigative journalism. For example, Labour Party had only one primary, seamless, well-televised primary in Edo State that produced our guy. He's the, our guy. No matter how anybody feel about it, Olumide Abata is the Labour Party pride now. He's our beautiful bride. And we are going to win the election with Olumide Abata. So for the media, to now listen to anybody that says he's a candidate. Can somebody come one day and say he's the president of Nigeria? Is it not laughable? It's laughable because there are processes to undergo to become a president. There are processes to undergo to become a party uh, candidate in every election. So a papa group, we are not supposed to be talking about it because for one year, I neck even as at this moment, if you can help me open your your, your guard gets there and browse who is the Labour Party National Chairman under INEC portal. You will still see that it's clearly written that is Julius Abure. And sometimes it breaks my heart, especially with what one of the police uh, PPRO said in Edo State, referring to Abure as a factional national chairman. He should be able to tell us and tell Nigerians that there are some scripts which some people are playing, which I feel that the media should begin to help us as we plan to take back to restore dignity of Nigerian workers, dignity of Nigerian youth, and dignity of even Nigerian pressmen. So as of today, we have, even tomorrow, till the election, we have Olumide Abata, the former MBA chairman, as our governorship candidate. No matter what people have done before the primary, the moment primary is done, the party becomes one. And today, the party is one, and we stand with Olimida Abata. Thank you so much. All right, well, thank you very much, Prince Ahanotu, and congratulations to your beautiful bride in your words. But let me ask a question. Before elections, um, let's dial back before your um, primaries, the Labour Party primaries in Edo State, there was an incident that took on headlines, and that was the arrest of your national chairman by the police, according to reports following the petition. I'd like to get um, your thought, um, your, uh, an update, Mr. Edun, as to 
Number one, was it in any way linked to the primaries? What was the basis of that arrest? He was released later on, a few, some hours later, I believe within 24 hours, and he was arrested alongside some party officials, state party officials in Edo State. What is the outcome of that? Um, he said that he was, I mean, following that, he was, there was a bit of, he was sitting on the floor. Was he handled properly? What were the, were the allegations against him? Against him, it seems to be a bit um, sketchy. I'd like you to throw more light on that. And did that in any way destabilize the primary elections that took place in Edo State? Okay, thank you. I would like to state, firstly, that that arrest is vicious, is abominable, despicable, condemnable. And it's a sad commentary on our law enforcement agents. We are not happy about it. We have condemned it. All our stakeholders have condemned it. The party has condemned it. And uh, I think we should do better than that. If the national chairman of a political party that has not been found guilty by any court of law, that has never even been tried, can be treated in that manner, it is sad for our country. And I want to say that the law enforcement should desist from such acts. Well, those officers that carried out the arrest seem to have a hidden agenda. And I think the agenda is to disrupt the process of the emergence of our candidate in Edo. Maybe they thought they could, maybe, I don't know who's instigated that, maybe they thought they could abort the process so that we would not have a candidate. But we are wiser than that, we are tougher than that, we are more determined than that. We knew before we started this movement that this kind of these sorts of things will come. But we will not be deterred, we will not be defeated, we will remain strong. Abure will remain strong and courageous because he has a mission that he started, a mission that will complete to ensure the emergence of the Labour Party at the national level and at the state level. And we are going to do something wonderful in those state. Mm. We have our candidates, in spite of all the uh, subterfuge, trying to stop his emergence, he has a march and is working tall. And I tell you, the people of Edo State have rallied behind us. And all they have done is only to show Nigerians that they are afraid of us. And it shows that because we have something different that we are going to give to Nigerians. We have something marvelous that we are going to give. We are going to bring massive development. We are going to change the fortunes of the people of Edo State, change the fortunes of the people of Nigeria. So we are not deterred. Abuja is further emboldened. Abure is further determined to achieve more in this kind of race. This man has made a lot of sacrifice in this, in this movement. He has done so well for the party to grow. And it's unfortunate that all these attacks are coming from left and right. But he's determined. We are determined. We are working with him. We are courageous. We will not be put down. Nobody can put a good man down. Nobody. Right. Abure is a good man. Okay. And nobody can put him down. Well, in spite of all these tough tabutes, we remain resolute. Thank you. All right, thank you, Mr. Edun. Prince um, Han Notu, I'd like to ask you, so I hear Mr. Edun, do you think that there's a political undertone to this arrest? And why would you say so? Because if you, if, I mean, if you think there is, why would you say so uh, as to the arrest of your national chairman? Well, uh, if you say there is a political undertone, I didn't say that. you, you I may didn't not say be that. wrong. No, I didn't when? say that. I didn't say there was. I'm asking. Okay. Do you? I said, but, following from what Mr. Edun said, okay. would you say there is a political undertone to the arrest and why? That's what I asked you. Well, well, while anybody can believe that there is a political undertone is because why arrest a national chairman of a political party two days to the party primaries? two days to party primaries. Like my national legal advisor have said, they felt that holding Abure would disrupt the primary. But Labour Party is an institution. They held Abure, they held the state chairman, they held my state youth leader in that arrest. So, but they felt that this could disrupt the primary election of the party. In fact, this thing happened the day we were even uh, returning our um, delegate uh, delegate election when we are doing our delegate congress because that was the major thing. That delegate election was the major thing when we had a very clean and successful delegate election. The primary <laughs> was just <laughs> seamless 
assuming we never had a very decent, clean delegate congress, the primary would have become uh, chaotic. But you saw how we manage our congresses across the 18 local government of the state. And that was why this, the, the, whoever that planned that and executed because there was no warrant of arrest on Abure sent to him either by email, by any form, by even WhatsApp. Nobody told him you are needed at the police station. And like my national legal advisor said, it's condemnable. Nigerian police could have done better. And this was why my generation revolted in 2020 when there was an NSAS uh, upsurge. Because it's wrong. As a citizen that is known to you, you know his address, you know where he lives. Is it not easy and simple for you to write him a letter, come to the police? And he's a public figure. I mean, can any political party national chairman in Nigeria, either PDP or APC, be molested the way Abure was molested? Let's tell ourselves the truth. And I'm happy that many Nigerians of goodwill have really condemned it. Uh, so the political undertone has been there since after our presidential election. There has been one fight instigated by people that doesn't want Labour Party to stand. And let's, let me remind us, Abure says something in one of the occasions where he had a press conference, that 2027, the Labour Party have only one nomination, presidential nomination form, and that this has been printed, and that is for Peter Obi. The establishment felt that if they give Labour Party space, they will consolidate with the obedient movement and then produce a formidable okay. opposition okay. that will rest to power in 2027. Okay. Okay. But I can assure that no matter the intimidation, okay. no matter okay. the whole drama, Labour okay. Party will still rest the power from the sitting okay. government in 2027. Okay, uh, so uh, thank you so much. Uh, but I'll just have to make some quick corrections, my very good friend. Uh, you cannot tell us our job and what to report, even if we report about other factions in the Labour Party. You are a politician. Please do your job. Just leave us to us. Don't tell us what we're going to report. I don't like it when politicians come here to do that. You're overstepping your bounds with due respect. No, Sarufai, it's not, I'm not telling you please, your job. Please. But I, I, I think felt that I have the media up monitors that. the politicians, the, money, the politician monitors the media. I'm uh, not accusing uh, you. I'm with, only with, saying with, with that some respect, certain things we respect, need to investigate further with you before respect, we bring it with up. Respect, please, sir. You all respect sides, you so much. All views, and I have sounded off on that. Please. please. Uh, Let's not let cross me, our boundaries, please. Let and me add to that. You guys do your work. A couple of things. Let me add to that, please. And I'd like to say, you know, a lot of people felt discontent Please, let me add to the way Aburi was treated in that arrest and all of that. But a couple of questions. Um, I believe that Mr. Edwin was trying to say something to you. Mr. Edwin, I have not asked my question, please. Please, let me add to that. He wants to add something. Okay, to thank you. Yes. Let me hear you. Let me ask my question first, Mr. Edwin. Okay, yes, ahead. we are waiting. Uh, please, let me ask my question first. So number one will be as regards you know, the undercurrent in the Edo elections. You were saying something subliminally. You were saying despite all that happened before the elections, now that uh, Olumli Apata has emerged, we'll all rally around behind him. What were those undercurrents? Because there was a lot that was said as regards who the party chairman was tilting towards and otherwise, you know, and even the emergence of Olumli Apata. So, would you like to talk to us about some of those undercurrents? Because it was not just smooth sailing. Secondly, for you, uh, and I would also like to know, because in all of this brohaha, we have seen accounts being given as regards how much was spent in the presidential election. We didn't see the forex denomination to the monies given. Is it that the Labour Party didn't re receive any forex as regards contributions you know, to presidential elections and things like that? Because we'd like to have you know, a full blow of the account for the sake of transparency and accountability across the board. I mean, we saw the one that Peter Abbey did release. We also saw the one that Bure did release. And also for you, the, the National uh, Legal Advisor of the Labour Party, how about all of these cases of forgery, you know, with Abure? Can you tell us where we are in court as regards this? I mean, there are a couple of cases out there and allegations here and there. Can we, you know, tell us where we are as regards the, with, with the court? And, um, you know, clearing the air as regards, you know, this factionalization. Now, uh, Ahantu was saying, even Lamidia Papa is no longer with the people he was with before them. Uh, Arabambi are split in one corner and all of that. Can you, know, you know, give us clarity, you know, as regards all of these splinter cells? 
You can start first uh, the, the National uh, Legal Advisor of the Labour Party. Okay, please. I will try to take the questions one by one. Please, yes. let me start with the Akwapa Group. Akwapa Group is a group in disintegration and debacle. They are in a fiasco. They are confused. You can see what they are doing. What they are attempting to do is the deceit, the fraud they committed in the off-season election, Imo, Bayesa, and Kogi. They deceived some people, collected money from them, said that they were doing primaries. But they couldn't, they said they produced candidates, but they couldn't upload them to the INEC portal because they can't have the code. They are not recognized. So all they are doing is deception, it is fraud, it is robbery. That is what they are doing. So that is said, uh, you can see what they are doing. Look at the comedy of errors. They are writing letters that they are submitting names when it is very clear that you can only upload the names of candidates to INEC through the INEC portal online by the code that can only be released to the national or the, to the INEC recognized national chairman of the party. So they knew all that and they, they jumped the gun. When the, when the timetable said that you can only upload names of candidates to the INEC portal from, the, from March 4 to March 24. So they, made, they wrote some letters February 20 something that they are submitting names. It is laughable. That is part of their deceit. That is part of the fraud they are committing on Nigerians. But you can, there is confusion. This comedy of errors is an indication that they are a group in disintegration, in debacle, in fiasco. They are a confused group and should be disregarded. That is for the Akwapa group. Now, as to the money that you said uh, maybe we have received that you should give account of. Firstly, a political party cannot receive foreign exchange from abroad. We cannot receive funds from abroad. By the laws of Nigeria, it is not permitted. You cannot receive funds. And I know the, the, if you look at the jurisprudence behind it, it is that so that a foreign government or a foreign organization will not be controlling the political affairs of Nigeria. So it is clear in our laws that we cannot receive money from abroad. And in case somebody wants to give money from abroad, it has to go through INEC. So if there is any money from abroad, any foreign currency, that people thought that Labour Party received, then they should go through INEC to see, because I, that money should go to INEC. It is INEC, that, so that is our loss. Okay. So we didn't receive any money from abroad. Real quickly, because talk about the forgeries, the forgeries before the we money. move on to another, because we need to wrap up now. Yes, I will talk, yes, I will talk about it. Firstly, I will, say, I will say that there is never any forgery anywhere. And Aburi has never been charged to court. No officer of the party has been charged to court for forgery because all those allegations are baseless. They are unfounded. They are just thrown up. And investigation, investigations okay. have been conducted. And they have found out that there is no merit in those allegations. So, no case. Thank you. Please, can you just quickly go ahead and answer those questions I I'm asked waiting you? to, yeah. Okay. okay, I hear there is what, no time. What other questions remaining? Okay, I hear there is no time to answer any questions. So okay. sorry, because we have to go, because we're really pressed for time. Uh, I will come back to you, Dr. Bati. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Kendi. I don't thank you, uh, Prince. Uh, thank yesterday, Abayo uh, uh, Bambi was on a program on this same station, and he raised quite a number of allegations about how, under Mr. Peter Obi, uh, Ibos have taken over the party, about how INEC recognizes the Julius Aburo faction because, you know, uh, some INEC officials were demanding $150,000. Uh, uh, and then again, he said a lot of things also about Julius Aburo. But we don't have enough time for you to, you know, respond to some of those uh, allegations. So there are two sides, uh, clearly, to the story. Now there are even three sides to the Labour Party story in Edo State. But we thank you for joining us.